What's going on guys, Gary Yaman here back at it again with a new video and in this video I'm going to talk about the Canon EOS M50 and I've been using this now for a couple of weeks and I want to give you my final thoughts and review of this camera. So let's find out, is this any good? Yes or no? Let's go. Six reasons I have for you why you should buy this camera. The first reason is it can shoot really high quality photos. So the image quality of this little guy is quite impressive to be quite honest. And I'm gonna show you some pictures here, what I did. I did some product photography. I did some self portraits with a little bit of flash and just showing you the dynamic range and stuff the uh, raw and then the processed version and it looks very good right just look at it the little examples you'll see it and it looks quite good very confident as well that you can do uh, paid jobs with this camera so it may not be a professional camera but you can still get paid for it because if you are a good businessman then you can uh, pretty much do photography with any camera and get money for it so high quality photos Good stuff, let's continue. The second reason why you should buy this camera is the dual pixel autofocus. It has very good autofocus in photo and in uh, video as well. What I forgot to mention in the previous section and in regards to image quality, even in low light, it can produce some quite amazing results. So uh, also in um, darker light situations or lower light situations, the autofocus works quite well. Uh, it's not up there in regards to Sony standards maybe, but still very good for a entry level camera. And I'm really confident in that. And uh, I think it's a great selling point if you want to have this camera. Then the third one is the ease of use. This camera is very easy to use. You don't have a lot of buttons. You don't have a lot of switches, just very basic stuff. And then of course the fully articulating screen with the touch screen and everything works very well flawlessly and you can just adjust almost everything and I really like it. I wish every camera has this easy smartphone like screen and the overall usability of this camera is very easy uh, especially for your beginners out there if you are a beginner and if you want a camera that does not have too much fluff or doesn't have too much specs or stuff then this camera is really worth considering and you would be a happy photographer or filmmaker or content creator whatever you or whatever you are um, so yeah, so let's continue to the next point and that's point four, the fully articulating screen. And yes, um, there are some uh, pros and cons and, but I really like it in this camera, especially if you are a beginner, what I've mentioned already, this is a entry level camera. This is something really for beginners and this little screen will help you. And then you can get some good photos like selfies or just use it for uh, online, online content creation, vlogging and stuff. So that's very cool. But next to that, also for photography, you can get very low portrait sessions like this. Then you go all the way to the ground and then you can still see the screen and everything. So that's very cool to have. So also a good reason to buy this camera. The fifth reason, the battery life. I was actually quite surprised. Some people said that the battery life was not that good, but to be quite honest for this compact camera, for this little battery, which you got right here, it's pretty much amazing. I just charge it once and then it will last me almost for two, three days or something, um, but not using it all the time. But, but if you want to use this camera for a whole day, then definitely buy a second or a third uh, battery, or maybe if there is a battery grip, use that one and you will be very satisfied with the battery life. All right, the sixth reason for buying this camera is the video quality. The video quality is actually quite good. Uh, maybe not professional graded, but for YouTube and home videos, it is really helpful and very nice. You do got 4K, but the uh, 4K crop in factor is a bit too much and you will lose the dual pixel autofocus. So uh, I would strongly suggest just leave it at full HD. So that's 1080p and um, go with that. You don't have slow motion, but still just for YouTube videos, home videos, bring it on vacation with you. This is really something worth for you.
So six reasons why you should buy this camera. Let's go to some reasons why you should not buy this camera. Reason number one for not buying this camera, mm -hmm. and that's the buffer. Let's, um, the best way to show you this is to demonstrate it. I'm gonna put it in the high drive mode or high speed continuous mode. And then here it is. Uh, let me see if I have a memory card in it. There is a SD card in it. So let's go how fast or how quickly the buffer gets full. Mm. Mm. Come on. Oh, here it goes again. Oh, oh that's it. Oh. So it's not the best. So if you are a sports photographer or if you want to have uh, some kind of event with a lot of things happening and you want to spray and pray a little bit and get a decent shot, your buffer will get full quite fast if you, as you just seen in this little demonstration. So that's a reason for me for not buying this camera. Reason number two. It has limited video abilities or capabilities, whatever you want to call it. The futures in video is very limited. As I mentioned before, you get you do get 4K uh, 25 frames per second or 24 frames per second, but you don't get 60 frames per second. You don't get 1080p and 120 frames per second. So you don't have really that much of a, a slow motion feature. You don't get really decent 4K. You will lose the autofocus in there, the dual pixel autofocus at least. Um, also the 4K, it crops in quite severe. Um, next to that, you don't have C lock, so you're quite limited if you want to do a lot of video work and um, you want to uh, professionally grade your footage, then this is not a camera to buy. So that's reason number two for not buying this camera. Reason number three is very subjective, but I think the grip itself, some say the grip is better than other um, entry level cameras, but for me, this grip, I don't even have the biggest hands, but as you see, Taking pictures with this is weird. Your pinky is even more uh, floating around than with a Sony body somehow because the, uh, how you take pictures with this. Let me demonstrate just a little bit. This is how you take pictures with, and you see it, you have to crop yourself quite small. So if you are a big guy, then this is not something for you. But if you are a small person, then I would definitely think that this would be a uh, not a reason to buy. But if you have bigger hands, if you are a bigger person, then uh, I strongly suggest that you have some kind of grip. I do believe that's available. So that's something that you have to consider if you want to buy this camera. I think that is a, um, a reason not to buy this camera if you want something comfortable in your hand because on the long run you will be uh, noticed or you will feel that when you have it laying around and you want to take pictures with this and you know that the grip is not comfortable enough there is something inside of you thinking that uh, this is not very uh, fun to you so on the long run you have to realize as well is this still uh, a fun camera to use and one of those things that can uh, that's a factor in uh, defining that is the grip of the camera and I don't like the grip. So let's continue to the fourth reason of not buying this camera. And that is actually, it is a very boring camera. Yes, it is an easy camera to use. Yes, it's very um, convenient as well, but it's also very boring. It does have the specs. It does have everything which you need as a online content creator, but you will reach its limitations very fast. So let's say if you want to do a lot of things, a lot of stuff, uh, let's say you want to do photos, you want to do high speed things, you want to color grade, you want this and that. You will reach its limitations quite fast. That's something that you have to be aware of if you, if you have a lot of interest in cameras and photography gear and filmmaking gear and stuff like that. And you want to learn it quite a lot. Then I would strongly suggest buying a uh, more advanced camera that can do more stuff, that has more features. But... That's also very subjective. Of course, this whole review is subjective, but you know, it is something worth considering if you want to explore more stuff and if you want to color grade and if you want to add a little bit of yourself in the footage. The fifth and final reason for not buying this lens is the lenses uh, selection and overall. Um, still as an entry level camera, you, you don't really need all those lenses maybe, but it would be nice to have if you already got some Canon EFS lenses maybe 
then um but then you need a adapter i'm not sure if the adapter works with the autofocus and stuff but you know the options out there is a little bit limited to my taste that's actually it reasons for not buying risks for buying the camera and now the overall conclusion or the overall thing that i want to say about this camera is that this is a camera that truly packs a punch that can do quite a lot of stuff for me this camera is not for me because i want to have a little bit more features in this camera i want to do more stuff um i do tend to have a little bit more fast speed things um so this is not it for me but if you are a beginner if you are somebody that wants a compact camera you only need a simple camera that can do basic needed things then this is definitely worth considering and you will be very happy with it all right that's all thank you again subscribe if not already like the video comment down below what do you think about the canon eos m50 let me know and then we can discuss about it and if you agree with my topics maybe you don't agree at all with those things then let me know then we can have a great discussion all right that's all thank you again and i'll see you in the next one good luck